Baik, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Abihi nasta'in Ala kulli umuri dunia wa din Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina Wa kurdi a'inina wa nuri kulubina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Wa barik wa salim Nama tu ta'ana ma wa ta'ani Mudhukar wa tazkir wa nafa'u wa nindifa' والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه ثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمةك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن سدك العلم لدني والمشرب السافي الهني يا هب يا غني اللهم إن سلك العلم لدني والمشرب الصافي الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن سلك العلم لدني والمشرب الصافي الهني يا وهب يغني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين آمين الحمد لله uh, we're going to continue today right, with the Fatih al-Maka and as I mentioned that we will be going through it bit by bit Right, because this is the one of the greatest events in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because Fatih Maka is basically the beginning of the end. Right, it's the beginning of the end of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, it has been narrated um, that once Sayyidina Umar, uh, you know, is the the, the, the hadith goes that Sayyidina Umar he used to bring Sayyidina uh, Ibn Abbas into his majlis. Zainab ibn Abbas is a young boy. And we know that he was born during the boycott. Right? He was born during the boycott against the family of Rasulullah SAW right, in Mecca. Right? And that was three years before the Hijrah. So Rasulullah passed away uh, 10 years after Hijrah. That means he was about 13 years old when Rasulullah passed away. And then, uh, of course, Zainab Abbas ruled for about two and a half years. So he was about 15 or 16 years old. But then Zainab Omar ruled. Right? So young boy, lah, you know, like teenager or maybe early 20s right, this time. And Zainal Omar used to always have him hadir, right, in the in the majlis that Zainal Omar had. And some of the older Sahaba, right, they were saying that why do you bring this young boy into our majlis? He is as old as our sons. Because they are the older Sahaba, you know, he's as old as our sons. Right? Why do you bring him into our majlis? And then Zainal Omar said, watch. And right? this is just watch what I'm going to do. So he said to the Sahaba, what do you understand by the verse Iza jaa nasrullahi wal fath right when the help of allah has come and the conquest wa ra'ayta an-nas yadkhuluna fi dinillahi afwaja and you will see the people coming into the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hordes that means a lot a lot in huge waves of people coming into into the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wastaghfir so say subhanallah and alhamdulillah and say astaghfirullah innahu kana tawwaba right? he is the one who is turning to you and and accepting your repentance so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a well known surah as right? so you ask the sahaba right, what do you say about this surah what is, what is the surah talking about and the sahaba say that's easy in the bigger sahaba all the sahaba it's, it's easy right this, 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 this surah is talking about the conquest of Mecca Right, because when Rasulullah came and conquered Mecca, thereafter people come, came into Islam. So many entire tribes were coming into Islam. The whole peninsula was converted into Islam. So he's speaking about the conquest of Mecca. And then Sayyidina Omar turns to Sayyidina Ibn Abbas and he says, What do you think? Right, what do you think about this verse? And then he said that uh, and then he said that that this verse is actually speaking about the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, he's speaking about his death. He's not talking about the Fatih Maka. He's talking is Allah informing his prophet, right, that his death is very near. It is imminent. It's very near. And then Sayyidina Omar said to the older ones, that is why I keep him in my majlis. <laughs> right? He understands Quran beyond any of you understand Quran. And that is from a dua of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah gave him, uh, made dua for him. Ya Allah, teach him the Quran and teach him the interpretations of the Quran. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas. Right? So, it, uh, so, so, so when, we see, when we speak about Fatih al-Makkah, what we are actually beginning is that we are beginning our conversation or our stories uh, on the end of the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's coming to an end. Right? So, it, uh, and that is what, uh, that's why Surah, Surah, Surah Nasr, right? when it was revealed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
right? And it was revealed before the conquest of Mecca. So it is actually uh, a form of uh, prophecy. I mean, and it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him that Mecca will be conquered. And Mecca is his. Right? It will be his. And he knew it will be his. Right? When he left Mecca, he knew that he would come back as a conqueror right, of Mecca. So they all, all, they, 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 they know it. They know it. Um, but but so when, when the ayat was revealed to Rasulullah Islam, and then thereafter when they conquered Mecca and then he went back to Medina we will see the story why he went back to Medina right? and then we uh, people began coming to him it's called the years of the Wufud right? the years of the Wufud Wufud in Arabic are the delegations right? delegations that means representatives uh, representatives so, so every tribe all over the peninsula after the conquest of Mecca every tribe over the peninsula almost every tribe will send their representatives to Medina because Medina is now the center like of Islamic uh, da'wah and education. They will send their representatives to Medina and, uh, and, and one by one they will, uh, that this, this small, small group of people from, from that tribe will come and they will, they will, they will first proclaim, proclaim their Islam on behalf of their tribe and then they will take bay'ah with Rasulullah right? and then they will learn the Sharia. They will sit in Medina for about a week. A week or two weeks, and they will learn the Sharia, and then after learning the Sharia, uh, they will go back to their tribes, and they will spread Islam to their tribes, and the whole tribe will be converted, and they will be the teachers. That's how Islam spread. Right? So their own people went to Medina, learned Islam, and brought it back. Right? These are the years of 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 the Wufud of the delegations. This happened after the years of uh of of, of the conquest. To the end of the life of Rasulullah Islam, every year, like, hordes of people began coming, and that was actually the time where Sayyidina Abu Hurairah appeared right, in the life of Rasulullah Islam. So Sayyidina Abu Hurairah is a very late comer, very very late comer, right? But he memorized hadith, mashallah, <laughs> right? The foremost of the Sahaba, right, memorized hadith. But he's a very very late comer. He, right? In fact, his tribe, the leader of his tribe, years before actually already became Muslim. But when he da'wah his tribe to Islam, they rejected him. So Rasulullah uh, so he asked Rasulullah to du'a against his tribe. Rasulullah refused. Right? Because Rasulullah knew that his tribe will, will eventually later on become Muslim. Right? So it, uh, true enough, later on they all became Muslim. And that's for Rasulullah So anyway, so, so that's why we're taking, we're taking time to go through this part. Because it's about the end. Uh, also when this, when this verse was, was, was revealed, Rasulullah he began saying, because the verse says, bihamdi rabbika wastaghfiruh. Innahu kana tawwaba. Right, so he kept saying, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, wa atubu ilayh. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, wa atubu ilayh. Right, out of responding to the verse, right, that says, Fasabbih, say Subhanallah, bihamdi rabbika, say alhamdulillah, wa astaghfirhu, and uh, say astaghfirullah, innahu kana tawwaba. Right, so he was responding to the verse towards the end of his life. Right, so he kept doing it a lot, right, especially towards the end of his last few days. He was doing it a lot right, because our responding to the verse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the last, so, so what we're seeing here is basically the, the coming to a close. The coming to a close of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here, right, uh, the, last time, the last thing that we took, we took the, the previous time is the conversion of Abu Sufyan. Right, so eventually he entered into Islam. He entered into Islam uh, and he, mashallah, uh, after a long time, la, right, and he even still resisted about Rasulullah being a prophet, right, but he eventually he took it. And thereafter, he dedicated his life to jihad, Abu Sufyan, dedicated his life right, to try to uh, atone right, for what he has done from before. Even though Islam wipes over everything, tapi this Abu Sufyan, like, they, they feel so guilty what they have done. Because once they enter into Islam, the light of Iman shines in their heart. And they are Sahaba, eh? it's still Sahaba, Sahaba. No human being is above the Sahaba. Right? Even up to our time thereafter, no wali at all is above the Sahaba. Sahaba top notch. Right? After prophets, right, you have the Sahaba. And among the Sahaba also, they are this ranking. Uh, so none of us can compare the Sahaba. So when we speak about the Sahaba, we don't, uh, we don't ever see them in a negative light or speak about them in a negative light because they are the foremost. Because you see, they are the people whom Allah chose to live in the time of the Prophet and to be at His aid. Right? What kind of people are these people that Allah chose? Because Allah chose their souls. You know, Allah chose these people to live in that time. You know, and to be in support of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are the best of the souls. 
that Allah has created to be in the same zaman eh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We all are people who come later on. And alhamdulillah that Allah chose our souls to be of those who are of the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's all from the choice of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and we need to be grateful that Allah subhanahu wa taala has given this to us. Right, without us, you know, seeking or asking, and it's all from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So here we see that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves Mar as a Zahran from Mecca. So he took, uh, he actually uh, took camp right, at this place called Mar, Mar al Zahran, and he ordered Abbas right, to hold back Abu Sufyan at the mouth of the valley, at the mountain pass, so that he could see the soldiers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as they pass by. So Al Abbas held him back. So basically what's happening is that they were about to leave right, and march from this camp area. They camped near Mecca. Right? And that is where Abu Sufyan came out to go and meet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to try and, to try and not, he's not trying to stop the conquest. You know, he cannot stop the conquest. It's too late. They're already there. Right? What he was trying to do is to uh, guarantee safety you know, for his people, for the Quraysh and for his family. That's what he was trying to do. He ended up and he ended up entering the Islam, <laughs> right? So he came out actually to try and you know get a guarantee of safety because and they know they can do this with the Prophet because they know he will give it. He will give. Right? He's he's someone who who seeks peace. So they know like which kind which kind of enemy thinks that you know knowing they are going to be conquered, there is no way around this confirmed conquered can actually have the you know the boldness to go out to the leader of the enemy and say to them, can you conquer peacefully? You know, can you don't don't hurt anybody and don't kill anybody? Can you give us like a peace, you know, a, a guarantee that you will not hurt anybody? I mean, so well, the very fact that he can do that is because he was so confident the Prophet Islam will do it. <laughs> they mean, not not scared, you know, like because I mean, otherwise you be so scared to enter. You know, you see when you enter into the camps of the Muslims, the other Muslims are saying, cut off his head, cut off his head, right? I mean, you will feel scared to enter into the camp of the enemy. The enemy will say, that's it, we're, we're enemies. You know, we are at war. Uh, if you see the, the, the leader or the chief of your enemy tribe or the enemy army, you cut off his head. Right? So, so, now Omar was like, you know, this is Abu Sufyan, enemy of God. <laughs> and so, luckily, he, when he entered on his trip, he was like, no, Abbas, can you just you know, take me under your protection? <laughs> if they see me, they're going to kill me. Right? And so, so, now Abbas took him. Right? So, now Abbas also was, was he, in a sense, he was uh, covetous of the iman of uh, Abu Sufyan. And he was hoping that so, Abu Sufyan would become be- a believer. And Sayyidina Abbas pun, mas- MashaAllah, you know, he was, you know Sayyidina Abbas, if, if you read the biographies of all these Sahaba, eh? Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abbas, the, 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 the uncle of Rasulullah SAW, he is toweringly tall. You see, he's so tall, like they say he's about two, between two to three meters tall. Tall, tall. <laughs> Sayyidina Abbas This is how they describe him Tall, tall Very tall man <laughs> He walked towering You know Over everybody <laughs> right, But the beauty of it Is that in the Shama'il That But when he walks With Rasulullah He will always seem shorter yeah, It's a miracle It's a miracle Nobody can walk With Rasulullah And they seem taller than him Nobody But when you look at him He does not Look at Rasulullah He does not look Exceedingly tall He looks normal Right, but when he talks with people, you will, you will see, eh, macam, macam nobody is taller than him. Right, it is, it is, it's a miracle. If you look at the Shama'il, you will see it in the Shama'il. Right, it's a miracle of Islam that nobody ever, height ever goes over, over him. But he is normal in build. He's average. You know, he's not too tall, not too short. Average in build. Average in also in, uh, in his size. So he's not skinny, right? nor is he overweight, right? nor is he bulky. Right, in his muscles, right, but he's lean. That's the description of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lean. He said his chest and his stomach was flat. So the chest did not protrude over the stomach. Like some men, right, they have too much muscle, their chest protrude over the stomach. Right, and nor did the stomach protrude over the chest. Like some men, when they have too much fat over their, <laughs> over their belly. Right, but Rasulullah was described like, to be his entire life, he was described to be lean. Right, lean. And it, mashallah, you learn Shama'il. Shama'il. Shama'il is really beautiful. If you've never learned Shama'il, go and learn Shama'il. Like, because you see, he says his hair from his belly button, this thin line of hair up his chest here. And then take it, the bit of hair. Right? And they see this hair on his arms. Right? And he has like manly, firm arms, strong arms. But not, they say, but not the rippling muscle kind. <laughs> uh, so, so, 
Ah, uh, not too much, not too little. Ah, uh, just nice. Uh, so not bulky, you know, like all the urat semua keluar, right? All the veins coming out, everything. No, 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 not like that. Uh, but just a nice, uh, like a manly arm, like a manly muscle arm, but not, but not like rippling, you know, that kind of thing. But the strength of forty men. Yes, so so I'm strength of of forty men. So mashallah, when you learn Shamail, you will. Uh, you will see things lah about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So anyway, so this Sayyidina Abbas, this Sayyidina Abbas, can you hold up? So Rasam all Sayyidina Abbas to take Sayyidina Abu Sufyan, and he said to him, hold him on the mountain, right, and let him watch the Muslim army march through, right. All of these things is for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is doing this. In a way, <coughs> he's doing this. <coughs> He's doing this in a way to increase the iman of Abu Sufyan. So when, because Abu Sufyan is a man of of war, you know, and he's a man of pride. He's a man of, uh, you know, like like you must have a lot of uh, followers. The kind of you know Abu Sufyan, <laughs> man of popularity, so right. So 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 someone was doing this display in Abu 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 Sufyan to show how many people under the Muslim army. Tengok ah. I look at this. I look at this. So it will enter into his heart right, that this is the truth. Look at because he does turn to Sayyidina Abbas and says, you know, the the the, the and I mentioned this before last week, right? That the affair of your nephew has grown so great, or he said the kingdom of your nephew has grown so great. And Sayyidina Abbas said, it is not kingdom Abu Sufyan, it's prophethood. Right? It's not kingship. Kingship is not like this. This is. This is complete and utter obedience, full, complete, unquestioning obedience. That's not kingship. That's prophethood. It's different. Kingship is different. Kingship is a paid army. That's what kings do. <laughs> they have an entire employed army. Prophets are different. When you have people coming in, it's all a voluntary army. <laughs> it's not it's not a bit. Right? And they would do whatever it takes. Right, in support of their prophet. It's different. Right, so he said so, 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 and this is Rasam's command. Hold him there. Let him see. So 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 and, and true enough, when Abu Sufyan saw, he was so overwhelmed, right, by the, the, the magnificence of the uh, Muslim army, and here we see a dawa method in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. For some people, right, it does take this kind of things to pull them in, right. So even though, like you know, you say, oh, the truth should be enough. No, some people, right, it actually takes this kind of like because they they appreciate that like, for them they that's how they understand things. They understand things like you know, if you have a lot of followers or if you have a lot of you know people under you, okay, then they understand that oh, you are someone who is, you know, uh, trustworthy. You know, or you're somebody who is real, like you're, you're legit, like you're legitimate. You know, you're a real prophet. That's how he sees it. Abu Sufyan. So, understand that is how he sees things, and that is why when he said that those who entered the house of Abu Sufyan, uh, they are safe, right? Because he's looking into the my mentality of people, right? So Abu Sufyan, he, which he came into Islam grudgingly. Right? You understand that? So we are going to enter into a phase of people who are entering into Islam grudgingly. The Meccans. <laughs> Before this, you had uh, those who entered into Islam uh, uh, fully sincere with a lot of difficulty as the first group. The Meccans in the early part of Islam. Then you had a second group of those who entered coming into Islam in a, in, a, in a whole group and the people of Medina. They entered into Islam fully believing and fully ikhlas but easily. It was not difficult. Right. Not, so not, not, not like the first people in Mecca, they are second. Right? But they enter Islam and it was easy. Amongst them are those who enter into Islam but without sincerity. Right? Munafik. Right? The Munafik, they enter into Islam but it's outward, it's not inward. Right? So they are uh, basically the wolves. Right? They call, you call them wolves in sheepskin. Right? They're pretending to be like the sheep but they're wolves right? in the ranks of the Muslims. These are enemies. Right? Now we're coming into a situation of a people who are entering into Islam reluctantly somewhat. Right? Or much, but they're not faking it. They're not. It's just that it has come to a point whereby there's no other there's no other there's no other option. There's not an option. Right? They're seeing it, they can't even deny it any further that is the truth. But because they spent all these years fighting it, right, that 
that they are called mu'allifatul qulub uh, uh, mu'allifa qulubihim right that means they are the people who they call them the mu'allaf right the mu'allaf mu'allaf mm-hmm. actually actually no no the mu'allaf what it actually means is that the mu'allaf now they use, use the word mu'allaf for convert mm-hmm. right but actually the mu'allaf the word in arabic allafa means to unite right so the mu'allaf is the one that you are trying to appeal to their heart right to unite their heart together with the believers that's the mu'allaf that's why the mu'allaf can give zakat you can give to the mu'allaf zakat why because they're there not there you know they, they, like they're, they're considering so they need like an extra push to come in so they're not like the one who is like you know, eager coming in running to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i believe no like sayna salman <laughs> sayna salman is one example of he you not call him a mu'allaf Right, because why he's been searching his whole life for this prophet, <laughs> right? He's been searching. You know the story of Sayyidina Salman al Farsi, right? He 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 left his kingdom. You know, searched you know, through Persia, Iraq, Syria, right, all the way down for the last prophet. So he's not. He doesn't need convincing. <laughs> so the mu'allaf is that's the correct word. The one who needs convincing. So they actually. Is a yeah, they use that word. The the correct meaning or usage of the mu'allaf is like Abu Sufyan kind of person, the reluctant believer. <laughs> not reluctant in the sense that, that he's not con- he's not he knows he knows it is the truth. Just need a bit more easing in, you know, easing in, right? Uh, yeah, not there, not not the eager, not the the, the eager believer, <laughs> and not the eager believer, right? But the like you see, the you see how his conversion was. His conversion is not like any of the other Sahaba. <laughs> right. And Sayyidina Omar, Sayyidina Omar marched down to Darul Arqam and said, Ya Rasulullah, Ashidu Allah, ilaha illallah, Ashidu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. You know, write down, intent. I want to enter. You know, I believe in this. After he said, Ya Rasulullah, what are we doing here? You no, know, actually he says, Ya Rasulullah, aren't you on the right? He says, yes, we are. I answer the Prophet. Yes, we are. I answer the Kafir. Yes, we are. Then what are we doing here? Let's go to the Kaaba and pray. Right, <laughs> and that's like Omar. He's got iman, iman all the way. So he's not someone who needs convincing. <laughs> he's convinced, <laughs> right? So you can't even stop him from becoming a Muslim, <laughs> right? In a sense, you know, like, like, like nothing would sway him. You know, full on belief from from the moment he gives shahada, right? But now we're entering into a group of people. They're not like that, and that's the beauty of Islam, and that's the beauty of the Sirah. You see, you see this this entire array of people and how they. How they interact with iman, how they interact with belief. Some people, much like, you know, like like Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, you know, like like really, you know, they hear only that's it, they are there. Right? Even not even when you speak, you speak of belief, you speak about obedience. Right? Some people they hear about one sunnah, that's it, they're doing it. Dah. Right? You they hear about another sunnah, they're doing it. They hear about some zikir, they do it. Right? Straight away. <laughs> right? They don't need convincing. <laughs> they they just hear one time and they do it. Now, some of us, we are just like on the Abu Sufyan side. Eh? <laughs> right? Need incentives, you know, and need to be told what's, what's in it for you, right? And you hear it so many times about the fadilat of, you know, or the, the, the virtue of praying night prayers. So you hear the virtue of praying subo to Raga's morning. I mean, the sunnah subo. You hear this, you hear, you hear all kinds of things. Right? But just the. And you know it's true, you know it's true, right? You're not doubting it, right? But it's just the, the it's called the berat. <laughs> it's, it's so heavy. That's, you're, you're in the Abu Sufyan category. <laughs> yeah, that category. Not the, not the Sayyidina Omar and Sayyidina Abu Bakar category. But they hear one time, the what? Like, done. And we actually find that like, the old generation, like my grandmother, around my grandmother, like that. My mother, the same thing. The day I was watching her pray uh, her ta- tahajjud, I was like, subhanAllah. You know, my mother at the high jute, since she was a teenager. Teenager, eh? <laughs> Lepas. Not, I've never, ever, ever, she never lepas the high jute. Ever. Yeah, so it's this kind of thing lah, that, that some people, they just one time, and they're doing it. Dah. You don't have to convince them. <laughs> some people, you have to keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. The believers. Yeah. There was. 
Mu'alaf by right, but now they use the term freely to mean all converts. But in fact, I've heard of, I heard, uh, who is this? If I'm not wrong, who was it? Shia, one of the Mashayi of the West. And he himself is a convert, so he can say it. He was like, those of you who have been Muslim for, for a good five years, you no longer converts, okay? <laughs> You're Muslims. Stop calling yourself converts. <laughs> Like, I mean, you're a convert for three days. <laughs> he said, you know, <laughs> thereafter, you're a believer. <laughs> like, I'm not a believer, you're a convert. Until when you're a convert, if you're like, an old Muslim, <laughs> this is like Shamza. He became Muslim longer than I'm, I've been alive. <laughs> so, I mean, and he, when he became Muslim at 18, he went right into studying Islam. That's why his Iman is like that. Right? I mean, so how many of us Muslims born Muslims? You know, the 30 years old, 40 years old, still, you know, not learning our religion very well. So when we are born Muslims, we're not any, you know, I mean, the, the convert, Salah say, oh, mashallah, they convert. And look at him. He's so mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. But you check, he already 20 years convert. <laughs> then he's convert and studying uh, secret knowledge for 20 years. Of course he's like that. <laughs> but of course not to say, not to say like, oh, that's why we're all like this. <laughs> no lah, I mean, it's not an excuse. Right, but in a sense that I have heard um Kaifa who's lecturer because he is a convert in himself. That's why that's why when I heard him say it, I was like, Can I say why the convert? <laughs> because I mean it's a good thing he's a convert. Because if he was a born Muslim and he says kind of things, the convert would be like, Who are you to say this kind of things? I mean I kind of think like you know, like like how like if you're a man and you speak about what women should be doing, right? People say, Oh, you're a man, what do you know? Right? But if you are a woman and you speak about what women should be doing <laughs> I women take it better. Right? right. Same thing if if, if you're if you're a convert, or I mean if you converted, you're not a convert, you converted. <laughs> right. And then you say, Oh hey, you converts. You are already one hour one 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 year Muslim, you're not convert anymore. Okay? <laughs> right. In fact you say he gave and he I can't remember how much he gave. Or three days or something like that. Or maximum one month. Maximum one month. Right. You're not a convert anymore. You're a Muslim. <laughs> You're a believer. Stop calling yourself converts. <laughs> but he's. But when I heard him say that, I was like, okay, it's a good thing he's a convert. <laughs> he can say that. <laughs> because we all, we won't say it, right? I mean, because if you were born Muslim, you won't say these kind of things. Right? But he did say, you know, like, how long do you call a convert? How long? Right? So the one which I'm. Like, you don't call Sayyidina Omar a convert. Do you? <laughs> no, you don't. You don't call Sayyidina Abu Bakr. All the Sahabas were converts. All of them. But from day one, they were strong on the Sharia. Tapi but Abu Sufyan, he's dead. So 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 I'm I'm pulling the parallel, right? Not just on iman, but also on ibadah. Right? There's two sides. Eh? We're going to put a parallel on that. Right? So as I mentioned four groups of people when it came into when it came into Islam, right? And we're going to and to extrapolate that to ourselves, come into ibadah. <laughs> or obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so you have the, the, the eager people. <laughs> the, the, the ones who they, the Samiyana wa ta'ana people. Right, they hear and that's it. They are there. Right, they hear about uh, uh, the, 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 the virtue of praying subuh in the masjid every morning. They don't let go. One morning, tak lepas. Every morning, they are there, right there. Right, they hear about jemaah prayer. They hear about, about they, they, they hear only that's it. They hear about siwak. Every you see, they got siwak. Right, straight away, you know, straight away they will, they will do it. There are those people. That's the first group, right? And then the second group we have the, uh, and those are people, especially if they are struggling, but they still do it. You know, it's the highest level. The second group, the Medinan, the Medinan people, right? Whereby everybody's doing it, so it becomes very easy to do it, <laughs> right? So the second group of people is that, you know, like for example, uh, you live in a in a hostel, everybody's waking up for tahajjud. Every in Darazahara, <laughs> everybody's praying the Sunnah prayers. Everybody with the Maghrib and Isha read, read Quran. Everybody got siwa. Everybody, uh, that's the Medina situation, <laughs> right? Whereby, uh, because the flow is there, to resist the flow is even more difficult. <laughs> to actually resist the flow, right? So it's more difficult. So they, they just forego with the flow, right? Uh, and they, they get reward also lah. But these people, like once the flow is not there, uh, and then to stand on your own. And to make your own flow <laughs> and go move your own boat, right? Uh, that one is uh, not all will do it. Very few. 
Uh, this is the number one. Number one is you're rowing your own boat. <laughs> you're rowing your own boat against the current. Uh, against the current. The number two is that there's a full current pushing you by. Right. And then uh, the number three is the hypocrite. <laughs> yeah. Number three is the hypocrite. Number three is the one whereby they do it to show off. Uh, so they only do it in front of people. Mm, they only do it in front of people to show off. That's number three. Uh, there is a third type of third type of ibadah lah, third type of people who do ibadah. So when there are people there, right? Oh, even though the one one is doing, they will do all the sunnahs to, to show off. But when they are by themselves in their houses, even the wajib also don't do. Right? And the Surah says that the, that the most difficult prayer on the munafik is subo and isha. Most difficult is very scary, eh? <laughs> right? Because a lot of Muslims in our time find subo and isha very difficult. The most difficult prayers to do. Right? In Rasulullah's time, it was said to be the most difficult prayer because for the munafiq, for the hypocrites, because nobody sees who's in the mosque. It's dark. You can't tell who came to the mosque. So because of that, the munafiq don't come. They only come in Zohar and Asa prayer. Because they can see. Can see, can see who's at the mosque. So when they can be seen, they come. When they can't be seen, they don't come. <laughs> That's the munafik. Right. In our time, subo and, and, and the hadith still stands. But it is nifak that is not it's not nifak haqiqi. And nifak haqiqi is real nifak whereby inside they are really disbelievers. They don't actually believe and they know it. But they are just faking Islam on the outside. In our time, munafik is more of the traits of munafik. But not munafik really. Uh, so believers, Muslims, right, and they do believe on the inside. They do. They're not kafi, right? But they behave like munafik. And we know there's such a thing as, as behavioral munafik. <laughs> you have the real munafik and you have the behavioral munafik. Because some said that, you know, whosoever, and as the hadith, whosoever has one of these three uh, traits, and they have a traits of munafik. And right? they have a traits of hypocrisy. And that is whenever they speak, they lie. Right. There's a few hadiths that she just speak about. Some say five, some say three. Right. And, and some of them is that whenever they speak, they lie. Whenever they are trusted, they betray their trust. Right. And whenever they argue, they go overboard. And these are all traits of munafik. Right. And they speak. That means, that means they begin to curse and they slander and they, they insult. So when like, they argue, they, they become ugly in their argumentation. They are ugly argumentators. Ugly. So that means, like, for example, for example, can argue, they, can, they can argue in dignity. So say, if I don't agree with something, I say, no, 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 that's not right. And I say, you should, my view is this. And then you say, no, 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 but I see it this way. And I say, well, that's not the way I see it. Right? So it's, it's an it's a, it's a adult conversation. <laughs> We're having a, a civil, <laughs> mature conversation. Right? The Mona effect, when, you begin, when people begin to argue with them, they begin to say, hey, you stupid or what? They kind of think like, sorry, <laughs> but, but they kind of think they're munafik do it. Hey, you, they, start using, they start using names, insults. Can't you think? Like, you know, like, hey, you so dense. Eh? Hey, you so, you know, like, alama, you, you know, no wonder you, you, do, you fail your this one. No, and, and they kind of, like, things that do, not even nothing to do with argument, they bring in. Out of nowhere. And you're like, why are you insulting me? Just argue civilly. Can we argue civilly? <laughs> you don't have to insult me. I say, but they, they, they argue, you know, they, 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 they say, your face like that. <laughs> you argue my face, pula. <laughs> you insulting my face. <laughs> right, this is called argue, argue. When they argue, they go overboard. It's overboard. You don't have to start commenting on people's looks, okay? <laughs> right, or call people, you know, you what face and you monkey face and you whatever. It's ugly, ugly argumentators. <laughs> They're not arguing properly. So, in this arguing is, is part of human life. You know, people argue. Bangkit, mungkin. Okay. <laughs> 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 yes, we aim Malay sama Faiza. We aim Malay sama. Mungkin, yeah. Okay, uh, so that one is oh, haram. That is in the Quran. That's in the Quran. That's in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran that to give that that to give a good word it means to be kind to people, to be nice to people. In the Quran, eh? Is better than to give sedekah that will be followed that be followed up by 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 hurtful words, and these hurtful words actually refer to the unkit thing. 
So that means if someone came to you to ask for sedekah or help, financial help whatsoever, right? And if you're not able to give, it's better that you just give them a kind words and say, may Allah help you out in your finances. But I'm so sorry, I cannot afford right now. You know, I myself am tight. You know, uh, we financially whatsoever. You can say, but do it nicely if you have to reject them. Right? And Allah says in the Quran, that is better than you actually giving them sedekah that every time you see them say ah see ah tak kerja kan ah see see are you working are you working <coughs> right when are you going to pay me back are you very lazy see i keep having to lend money to you okay and then you see how how these kind of people they, when they lend money they're very they're very mean they give money they give to the guy and whatever but they're very mean about it and they keep it's called Unkit lah, and then unkit like remind, 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 and then also use it to ab- to verbally abuse other people, right? Especially to the to the poor, you know, call you lazy, right? If I were you, I would, and kind of thing like kind of bad mouth lah, bad mouth. And this is in the Quran, this is in the Quran. But that is better to be to be nice with your tongue. So anyway, these are all traits of the munafik. Uh, that in our time, well, there there are still maybe real munafik, but. In our time, it's more behavioral munafik, right? And behavioral munafik are those who do uh, acts of obedience to show. It's all for show. So, so while the hadith that I mentioned just now, I'm going back to here, but it's all it's all called sunnah mawaqif, right? Sunnah mawaqif basically had a uh, stira, and then you pull out all the lessons because we're right at Abu Sufyan's part. So we have completed the types of people <laughs> who enter into Islam. And this helps us in understanding our own selves. Are we Abu Sufyans? <laughs> are, we, uh, uh, you know, are we the Meccans in the early part of Islam? Are we the Medinans that we need crowd, you know, crowd ibadah right, to start doing ibadah? <laughs> right? Are we Na'uzubillah with the Munafiq who only when people praise than you do? You know, only when you stand out then you do, right? Are you? Are we going to be that, right? So, so, so for us to to analyze the different types of people who enter into Islam, and how they are handled. So, are we the Abu Sufyan whereby, oh, you really need so much encouragement. <laughs> you really need to see this. You really need, you know, uh, uh, incentives. You really need someone to keep talking to you and showing you and whatsoever. And if there's nobody in your life who's influencing you, you fall back, you lapse, you relapse, you relapse, you know. Like in a sense, uh, you know, what, where, where, where do we stand? So anyway, the, 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 I was finished that part, but then I go back to here. Uh, so the, the munafik, that is by behavior, right? The hadith still stands that Isha and Subo are the most difficult for them, right? Why? Not because of trying to show off, but because of sleep. Is Isha and Subo is the point of nafsu is the strongest. Nafsu of sleep is the strongest. But actually, you know what? Just to be honest to ourselves, if you're wasting time on Facebook, right? Oh, you can stay up. I mean, someone's wasting time on Facebook, they can stay up until late at night wasting time on Facebook. And we know people do that. They watch soccer games, they watch, they watch, they watch, uh, uh, they watch videos, <laughs> they watch movies, they watch, or even worse, they watch all this kind of like serial drama. You know the the, the what? Netflix. Uh, Netflix. Mm-hmm. They watch all those like key Korean drama series, one after another. Each one of them one hour or something, and I have no idea what. So in a sense, you see what it is, right? Right. That if you want to pray Isha, then pray Isha, and then pray Sunat Isha to rakaats. And some said in a hadith, right? And you can find it in in the book of Sisters. Those who pray four rakaats after Isha is as if they have stood the night praying Laylatul Qadr. The hadith, like in in, in book of us, who's supposed to pray four rakats after Isha, not counting the the badia, it means four more. Uh, after Isha, there is the one there, but you have the hips of iman, right? I mentioned before, right? Uh, is equal to praying Laylatul Qadr every night after Isha four. So in the Aisha said that Rasulullah, when he goes out to pray to pray Isha, he will not come back until he prays the four. Uh, and the four, what do you need? Need uh, witir. <coughs> He prayed four straight. Mm, four straight. He did it. Yeah, so now Aisha would say that he will pray the four before he comes back into the house. This, this four can yet with it. Because we did maximum 11. Uh, so we, we did maximum 11. So if you're already, you're already used to doing three, can maybe for example. So if you do the four in front, so all together you have now seven. 
Ah, uh, seven with you, mashaAllah. And if you, if you more hardworking, you can do four more. <laughs> Become eleven. <laughs> right, the one can do later tahajud eh. <laughs> no, we tell can do maximum eleven. Can? Yes, five. Can? I'm trying to encourage you to eleven. You encourage do five. I just said seven, and I said not 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 promote to eleven. You not discount to five. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yes, after Kabliya, no, after after Badia, Isha, then Badia, two, then four. Ah, yes, after the Badia, then four, right? So, but it's a Sunnah prayer, so you can even sit down and pray, you know, whatever, like if you want that one. Actually, if I take my book of assistance, I can give, give you the hadith. It's from the book of assistance. It's, it's found in there. Right, four rakats after uh, Isha. Right, it's equal to standing in the night in Qadr. Right, so so, so, so you see, it's kind of thing. Like, okay, who are the eager, eager beavers? Eh? <laughs> right, doing or not tonight? Doing or not tonight? <laughs> and start and never stop. Can I not? Right, or are we the, the Abu Sufians? Okay, next week, who do I give you present? <laughs> Ah, uh, they come. This is the 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 chala. <laughs> if you do, I give you present. Ah, uh, so. Uh, uh, so so the people of Medina. Okay, now after class, you pray each other together. Everybody must stand up and pray the four rakats. Ah, uh, that is the Medina situation, right? And then the the Munafik situation is <laughs> example, eh? Right after praying Isha, this person stands up and say, "I am praying the four right now." <laughs> 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 and no one else is doing it, and you're the only one who's doing it. I pray for now. Yeah. So, so anyway, so that is that is what it is, lah. Right. So, 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 so in our time, the munafik, but by traits, not by reality, uh, they find subo and isha difficult because of sleep, because of sleep, right? Because they just this is nafsu, the nafsu is like sleep, 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 sleep. So when they get into bed and they want to sleep, they open their handphone and then they, 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 they do, don't know what they do on the handphone, right? And then they stay awake and they saw Shaitan, like Shaitan stay awake until 1 a.m., 2 a.m. and then fall asleep and then miss subuh. Uh, that is the game, eh? the Shaitan's game. And, and some people, they can learn every, every night, but still will learn their lesson. <laughs> every night, Shaitan is the same trick and every night it works. And every night they wake up and every night they're like, Alamak, what did I do last night? Right, and then and, and the next night happens the same thing happen again. Every time. He's like he's shaitan like, this person that doesn't learn, eh? <laughs> right. He's a, he 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 falls for my tricks every single night. Right, so, <laughs> so may Allah help us. La. May Allah help us. <laughs> easy game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one is, is a tried method, the confirm work. So it is this phone is a La Hala Wala Kwata Illa Billah, but uh we control ourselves, eh? Cannot blame everything. cannot blame all the tools around us. Shaitan make it easier for us to just watch now we don't even have to watch T V on TV. Watch T V on the phone. Okay, so anyway, this is Abu Sufia and he is that kind. The one that in a sense he entered Islam, he knows the truth, but he saw you know, they saw about it. In the initial stage only. Thereafter, he became a true believer. Right? And then he went out for hijab and things. But beginning, there's a soreness about it. Right? The, and this is important for us to understand. And this is to, to understand this is the sentiments of the people of Mecca at this point. Because Mecca will be conquered. And they're all, you call, saw Muslims. <laughs> right? They have come into Islam and they are saw. S-O-R-E. They are saw. They just... Ah, in a way, in a sense, the reluctant Muslim, in a way, and that is important for us to understand to see how Rasulullah Sallam deals with them. Like he is, he is trying to pull them in, right? and and you will see his his treatment of them is very different from a treatment of the of the first early Muslims, and also the Medinans, people the Ansar, right? Very different treatment. That they received because they are, they're coming into it, not uh, they coming into it upset lah basically, uh, and and because of that you come into a story on a very beautiful story. In fact, one of my most favorite stories in the Sira, 
the story of Taif. It brings you the story of Taif, right? The story of Taif thereafter about the 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 the, the, the amazing khutbah that Rasulullah gave the Ansar, right? Because there was a clash, right? And there was displeasure from the Ansar as to something that the Prophet Sallallahu did. Right? There was a displeasure. Right? And, and for us to understand the, the, the stance that Rasulullah has taken right, in this situation. Right? And that's why also sometimes, like, like, like even as parents or as teachers, that you know, sometimes when, when, when we, like for example, if, if let's say a child right, or a student right, is the Abu Bakr kind, <laughs> like, or the Sayyidina Omar kind, Whereby they 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 are always on the ball, they are always doing their prayers, they are always this, they are always that. Like they are self motivated on their ibadah, and the parent or the teacher sees that the other child or the other student needs a bit more incentive. You know, it's quite the the berat one lah, <laughs> the, the heavy one. Needs a bit more incentive, needs a bit more encouragement, a bit more push. So the parent in in employing the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives this other child presence. You know, buys things like give chocolate, give present, and whatsoever. Right? The first child will see that, hey, why you give my brother all these things? You never give me when I was his age. Right? So he has to understand that you are the Sayyidina Abu Bakr kind of people. <laughs> You're self motivated. <laughs> Your brother is like the Abu Sufyan kind of people. Right? Must give chocolate. <laughs> then start to do their work. Then start to do their ibadat. Right? Only when I when I when I praise him, then he does start to do his 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 prayers. Right? But he will get to where you will get. Right? Inshallah. But you, mashallah, Allah gives you from the very beginning. And that's actually exactly what happened thereafter. You wouldn't see it on. And also, which will give to the Meccans a lot of wealth. A lot. That's where they get that you can give to those whose hearts need reconciliation. That's got the mu'allaf. Right. The, their hearts, they 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 have been conquered. They are so, they upset, they are hurt. Because they've been fighting the Muslim for so long and now they're conquered by a walkthrough, by a walkover. They are hurt. Right? But, so they're reluctant Muslims. Right? So when the Muslims won a huge amount of wealth from other wars near Mecca thereafter, Rasulullah gave huge portions to Abu Sufyan, huge portions to, to, to each of these people who are fresh Muslims. Fresh. And he left nothing for the Ansar and the Muhajirin. Hardly anything. And that actually spurred out displeasure on their end. Right? But that one was also by the whisperings of the Munafik. So the Munafik amongst the Ansar began to whisper, look at this. Look at this. He now conquered. And this is how the Munafik the voice, eh? is their voice. He now conquers Mecca. He's back with his, his people. So the Munafik is whispering amongst, we're going to go into story, it's one of my most favorite stories. The Munafik is, um, sees they're whispering amongst the Medinans and, in that, and they're, say, they're whispering all these things, you know, amongst the true believers. So they're affecting the true believers. So you see, look at it, look at it, look at it. He has now conquered Mecca and now has all this wealth and he's giving it to the Meccans, not to us. Ask people from Medina who help him. He didn't give us anything. He gave, and he did, who, are, who are they having suuz on? on? The Prophet. They're having bad opinion of the Prophet. But it's the Munafik who are doing it. They were whispering. And the true believers among the Medinans, they got upset. Because these whisperings affected them. And it was not that they were upset because they are Sahaba. I mean, they hold them in high, in high regard. They were not upset because like, all of this you know, uh, wealth went to the Meccans. They were upset because they saw it was a form of favoritism that he will always love his people more than them. So they were being, like that's how you see a child, like the older brother and the younger brother, right? If the mother gives chocolate to the younger brother, the older brother got money to go and buy his own chocolate. It's not about the chocolate. It's about the mother prefers my younger brother. My mother always gives him stuff. My mother, in a sense, my mother's love for him is more. That's the problem. Right? That was why they got upset. Right? So it, it's not about like the, the older brother does, like in school or JC, you know, or university, right? You know, he has his own money. He couldn't care less to buy his own Kit Kat. Right? I mean, a small brother in primary school trying to pray for him, so they get Kit Kat happy. Right? He, to him, it's more of like, you know, like, like, like my mother, eh? 
always favor him, always give him present, always when I was teaching, I didn't get anything. That kind of thing. So it's more of the jealousy or the displeasure. It's not because of the wealth, the dunya we thing. It's not the dunya we thing. Is that this means that he loves his people. He's a Meccan. He's from Mecca. They have conquered Mecca. And very obviously, he favored his own people over us. They saw it that way. They didn't see that what he was trying to do, what he was trying to do was trying to reconcile their hearts. Because he knows that the way to the Meccans is by wealth. You give them money, you give them wealth, you, 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 it's called comforting them. You pujok sikit. <laughs> you comfort them. Right, in 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 that in them coming into Islam because they came in reluctantly. See how how wise Rasulullah is. He's very well aware. These new ba- this latest batch of Muslims are not at all like the earlier batches, <laughs> and they are not the same. They ha- they need work. They already entered into Islam. They already said the shahada, but they need work. Their iman is not there yet, and they need things to pull their iman. So that's why you see the story of Abu Sufyan or something to, 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 to say that Abbas make him watch bringing up to the mountain. It's not that he wants, Rasul wants to, to show off you know, and parade the Muslims. No, it's for Abu Sufyan's heart. Abu Sufyan, he's a kind, if he sees a huge army, he's, he's bought over. <laughs> you know, you can, you know, in a sense, like, you know, he's sold, like, in a way, you know, he's sold. Like, this is correct. He has to see it. That is, the, that is his mentality, like that. It's, it's called prophetic wisdom. That's how Rasul Islam does things. Right? He sees how people are, their background, what appeals to them, right? what will get them, you know, how they can be sold like, in a way, you know, be convinced. And then he does that with them. This one, like, I can't wait to get into the story of Taif. But it's such a beautiful story. And even how Rasul Islam handled the Sahaba, the Ansar, after he actually caught wind of what was happening. And he got very upset actually when he when he heard that the Ansar were having, you know, is it Suzan? Is Suzan is having a bad opinion, right? By seeing that oh, it's favorite to them because for them also they got even more upset that the whispers went to, you know, oh, he loves his people more than you, right? The the, 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 the Munafik they were they were whispers kind of things, and then some of them say, they they, they, they think to themselves and they begin to panic and they say. Now he has conquered Mecca. Why does he need Medina anymore? So he even went to that extent. Will he come back with us? Is he going to stay here? Because he left Mecca because they were being hostile. Right? And, he, and we took him in in Medina. But now Mecca is conquered. Now, now what? <laughs> so they begin to panic also. Right? Now Mecca is conquered. And then, is he going to stay here? And we go home? What are we going to do? So the makeup people, the, the true believers of Medina, they got, they got emotionally affected. They, they thought they lost the Prophet in being their neighbor in Medina. They thought they lost him. Because now he's, he's in Mecca. He has his land, he has his people. What does he need us for? We are just Medina. We're just, what, what are we? We're just a, a, a town, an oasis town that has farmland around. That's all we are. We're not, nothing, we're not anything fantastic. I mean, just, we're not a big town. This is Mecca or Kaaba. You know, <laughs> you get what, 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 how the, the, the Ansar are thinking. So it broke their heart. Like it really bro- broke their heart with what they were seeing that Rasam was doing. But we'll go into the story. Like, it's a very emotional story. Rasam so and, 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 and the, uh, the Ansar. Right? But it shows his um, love for the Ansar. We will go into the story, inshallah. Okay, alhamdulillah, uh, it's 9.35, I can continue a bit more if you all don't mind, uh, but, oh, you want to go home, late. Uh-huh. Not yet, sorry, I'll talk later on, yeah. No, Tabuk is later, later. <laughs> Tabuk is really later on. It's not at this point. Right. So, so in another narration, Abbas said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I am not confident that Abu Sufyan will not turn away from Islam and disbelief. So bring him back so that he may stand and watch souls of God with you. Right. So, so, it, uh, so it was another narration that Abu Sufyan, Abbas was the one who said to Rasulullah, I think Abu Sufyan is shaky. Uh, so it's, it's important. Shaking, I mean, shaking is iman. 
Iman not strong right? So so it's important for us to learn sirah There are people who enter into Islam They're just at the edge right? They can easily leave So these people we really need to rope in Hold their hand right? Or those who just stow back They're right there right? They, They're coming, they're not coming, they're coming, they're not coming Right, the, the the lure of the of of sin is too strong, or they are reminiscing of their life as sinners. You know what they used to do is too strong, right? So so they, they want to but not. So it's called people they really need embracing. It's called mu'allaf. I mean, you're, you're really going to unite them with you, take them by the hand, pull them. So I was saying this now, right? About you know this that, that person that it it actually takes one on one. It literally, literally takes one on one. Or it takes just you know it takes personal friendship to really pull them in, and that's why you know uh, at best for for converts who are who are they're not the the the, the all the way in converts, but that is they're not there they're not there right that they need someone to take them by the hand right? until they're pulled all the way in right then can they go right and then they can be strong. So then I was in Abbas and I said that I think. You know, Abu Sufyan is He's not going to stay a, a believer He might turn back like he's so, they, can, they can even tell That Abu Sufyan is not Like those who entered into Islam Earlier on He's the first of those eh? <laughs> There's going to be a whole lot more Coming He's the first one <laughs> Thereafter He's like, like, like the, 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 the preview To what's to come Of the Meccans right? All the reluctant Muslims But they all become True Muslims eventually and just to give them, uh, you know, a good account, right? They come true Muslims eventually, right? So, so to watch the stories of Allah Subhanahu with you. So, the Abbas found and detained him, and Abu Sufyan says, "Is this betrayal, O Bani Hashim?" And Sayyidina Abbas said, "You will learn that we are not those who betray, but I have a need of you." So, Sayyidina Abbas found Sayyidina Abu Sufyan and took him, right? Abu Sufyan thought that 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 you know they were, they had turned against Abu Sufyan. So this is betrayal. Are you trying to catch me and 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 kill me? You know you're betraying me. I have become a Muslim. Right? Why, why are you doing this? Then I was in Abbas says we are not those who betray. We are Muslims. We don't betray. Uh, and then he says, but I want to show you something. In the morning you will see the army of Allah and what awaits the polytheists of the promise of Allah. Right, then he went up there with uh, Hakim and Budail, the two of them who also came Abu Sufyan, and they both also became Muslim. So they all saw the marching, and that was a sight, right, to behold, and that caused Iman to enter their hearts. See this Abu Sufyan? Eh? He's the one who was with Heracles. He's the same one. I was with Heracles when he went to Syria at the same time when Heracles got letters from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam calling him to Islam. And Heracles called Abu Sufyan and he says, are you from Mecca? And then he said, yes. And then he says, do you know this man called Muhammad who's claiming to be a prophet? And Abu Sufyan said, yes. And Abu Sufyan was, was honest in that Q&A with Heracles. And Heracles asked several questions from their book, the Christians, because they're Christians, from their book. And Abu Sufyan, you know, he answered truthfully because he figured that if he lied to the king and the king finds out that he's lying to the king, right, then that would affect his business or affect his reputation or whatsoever. So he actually uh, answered truthfully. So when Heracles asked him, right, that, you know, this, this man who's claiming to be a prophet, who are his followers? Who are his main followers? Abu Sufyan said, the poor, right? There's a few here and there who are of the rich, but his main followers are the poor. Right, and then uh, Heracles. I went to the story kind of about Heracles and Abu Sufyan. Right, uh, and then Heracles asked Abu Sufyan again. Is it the same Abu Sufyan? You know, tell me about his wars against you. Fight against him. Tell me about your, your wars. And then Abu Sufyan says, sometimes he wins and sometimes we win. Right, like Badr and Uhud. Right, and then Heracles asks again. You know, tell me about. Uh, you know, is he from a lineage of kings? And then uh, Abu Sufyan says, no, he's not from a lineage of kings. And then uh, Heracles will ask also like about uh, his lineage, he's from a noble lineage from amongst us. And then Heracles thereafter said, like what you're telling me, right? Uh, of, I'm rephrasing lah, like but you, know, you said that he, the, the the majority of his followers are poor people, those who are in poverty, and so are the prophets. My right? prophets tend to have their followers those who are poor, because Islam, from the very beginning, from Nabi Adam's time. Calls towards the denunciation of the world. Right? It calls towards uh, using this world as a tool 
to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but not amassing the one. And Islam calls towards the best of you are the best of you in deeds, not the most of you in wealth. Right? So that's why it tends to, to draw in the poor right? and not the rich because the poor have nothing to lose. <laughs> right? They're poor. <laughs> right? uh, but the rich, they have a lot to give up if they want to enter into Islam. So their richness becomes a, a test on them. You want to enter into Islam, Islam calls for sadaqah. Islam calls for zakat. Islam calls for, you know, not saying that you are better just because you're richer. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not a master just because you're rich, right? But it's by your deeds. That's how you're going to be. So it's like prophets tend to have their followers all poor. <laughs> right? The poor can take it better right, than the rich. And then when, when he said uh, that, that sometimes they win and sometimes we win, right? Uh, so he actually said, and like that are the prophets, right? Allah does not make them win every war. Like God, I mean, God makes them lose when they don't, they don't, they don't obey. Like that what happened in in Uhud, right? And then when when he said about uh, about Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, about his lineage, anyone from uh, from before him was a king, and he said no. Then he says, and like that are prophets, right? Because had there been kings from from above him, then he could have been trying to regain the kingdom of his forefathers, right? So he is a prophet. And then the Heraclius said to Abu Sufyan that if what you are saying to me is true. You know, what was saying to me is true. Then he said, he will conquer the very spot I am standing on right now. Okay. Heracles said that. So Heracles knows Rasulullah is a prophet. And Abu Sufyan, who's, obs- who's, who's, who's witnessing this entire thing, and there's nobody there at all except for him and Heracles. He's seen this. This is years before this, eh? years before. <laughs> right? So Abu Sufyan, all these things happened to him. Didn't become Muslim. Abu Sufyan, say now Abu Sufyan, may Allah have mercy on his soul. Now be pleased with him. Here he becomes Muslim, but why? Um, Ajam, that you will say dead end. There's no way out now. Become a Muslim or just live under the rule of the Muslims, which to them is humiliating. <laughs> Rather become Muslim. <laughs> so they say, see that's what's going on, eh? Right. So that's basically that's what's happening. So so he did that. Last time had ordered a call to call. Right, every tribe come forth with its flags, raya, right, and make plain that which you have of equipment and arms. They came forth and each tribe passed unit by unit in front of Abu Sufyan. And each time a tribe would pass, he would ask, O oh, Abbas, who is this? And he would say, Sulaim. And he would answer, What is Sulaim to me? Right, and then another tribe would pass, he says, Who is this? He says, Ghafir. Ghafar. And he would answer, What is Ghafar to me? Right, and so, Tribe after tribe after tribe passed by, and Abu Sufyan would ask him, "Who is this tribe? Who is this tribe? Who is this tribe?" Right? Uh, to see, you know, for how far Islam has spread, how far and why Islam has spread, right? To so many different. So it's not it's not just Medina anymore, right? It's so many tribes that enter into Islam, and they are they, and they are uh, with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? So. It, uh, and then, and then until Rasulullah passed by with his green troop, right, the Arabs were called black green at times, right, and his unit was black with iron arms and, iron, and, and, and armor. Right, and there was, the Arabs were called, as, I think when you were Susan Mariam, you realize that, eh, right, they would call some colors other colors. So like, they would call green black. They like that. It's the way they are. <laughs> so when, when Susan Mariam was saying, she said that she wanted red bread. Khubz uh, Ahmar. I knew that she meant brown. <laughs> right, so they were all, they were all like, we were all serving her, and they were like, "What's red bread?" Because <laughs> she was saying "khubz ahmar," "khubz ahmar." You know that "ahmar" means red in, in Arabic. So they were like, "I said, what's red bread? What's red bread?" I just, she means brown. <laughs> and that's how they speak. They just speak that way. Like they, 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 they use a color. So when, like, if you've seen like some of the description of a Sahaba, they will say his face was blue. He had a blue con- complexion. You say azra. They would actually say azra for the skin of the, of the man. They're not talking about blue. They're talking about this color. Reddish brown. Oh. <laughs> not blue. So you must learn it with a teacher. <laughs> so you know that. Huh? How come his Sahaba is blue? <laughs> He's not blue. <laughs> but they, 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 tend, they, tend, they tend to do that. The Arabs. So they will do, will do that. They, they tend to, but you have to sit with them long enough to know what colour means what. <laughs> and they will call things. 
<laughs> no, no, it is sometimes that color. But if it sounds weird, right, like red, like red bread, yeah, apa ni red bread? <laughs> she means brown. She means not the white one. Right, but she means, she doesn't call the cat's red. And it's a red cat. But she means brown, not red. <laughs> what a red cat. <laughs> Which red cat? Right, so but anyway, so, so, so you say that, that he came across in an army of green, but they were actually black. Right? And they were heavily, heavy armor, so that only their eyes can be seen with, with, in the helmet slits. He was upon his camel, Al Qaswa. Right? His, his flag was with Az Zubair Al bin Awam and Sa'ad bin Ubada, right? uh, okay, the Ray of the Ansar. And he says, Ya Abbas, Alhamdulillah, who are these? And he says, This is Rasulullah with the Muhajirin and Ansar. And then he says, For surely nobody has the strength or the force to face them. Right, Wallahi, O oh Abu Fadl, I mean, Sayyidina Abbas, the reign of your brother's son has become mighty. The reign here, he means the, the kingship, the kingdom. And then Abbas says, Rahimahullah, Ya Abu Sufyan, right, may Allah have mercy on you, Abu Sufyan. It is prophethood. It is not kingship, it's prophethood. Right, he said, All right then. You know, and then none in Abu Sufyan said, This is the truth, Rasulullah, with it is read death. This is Muhajirin Ansar, and he said, Move on, O Abbas, for I have not seen the likes of these soldiers or this group ever. See how he's convinced? He has to see it. He must see the numbers, the, the troops you know, marching past. Then he's like, Okay, you know what? You all are conquerors, you know, and you all are the, victor- the victors, and you all are the. Right? Now he's fully convinced. Now his iman is firm. Right? You want to be on this group. Right? It's because he understands it this way. And this is how he understands. So, so he wants to be this way. So then Abu Abbas said to him, Go quickly to your people, O Abu Sufyan, and tell them that the, that the Muslims are coming. Right? They, uh, they are marching here. And the Makkah yelled in his loudest voice, O people of Quraysh, Muhammad is here. He comes to you with that, that you have no match. Right? Do not even resist. He's going to come over and walk over and conquer Makkah. He says, Whosoever enters the home of Abu Sufyan will be secure. He says it. Eh? <laughs> and you see how he likes he likes position. <laughs> so even though some said that, you know, whoever is at the Kaaba is safe, whoever is in their homes are safe, whoever is in the home of Abu Sufyan is safe. He goes out and he says, whoever's in the home of Abu Sufyan is safe. <laughs> he speaks about his own house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he, you know, because this is the thing about Abbas and Abbas, you know, some, that Abu Sufyan is a man who likes name. And you know that he's like that, right? So, Give him some name lah. <laughs> you know, won't harm. Give him some name. He'll be, he'll be happy. Right? That you give him some sort of some sort of face, some sort of position. He likes it. Like mashallah, Abu Sufyan. Right, but mashallah, he became one of the best, best uh sahaba in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter. Right. His wife Hind bin Utbah. And Hind bin Utbah, we know her because she's the one who ordered the killing of Sayyidina Hamza. Right, by Wahshi. She also becomes a Sahabi, eh? So even though she bit into the, the, the liver of Sayyidina Hamza right? And some say it's because she bit into the liver of Sayyidina Hamza That some of his iman entered into her <laughs> And then she also became a Muslim <laughs> Some say lah, Allahu alam right? But because she did what she did eh? So he, she sees him by the moustache It's so severe eh? I mean, Not bit, uh, moustache So you see him by the moustache She pulled him She, Hind you know, Sayyidina Hind She is this kind of woman that you would say Uh like they wear the pants uh, in the family, you know, that the kind of saying, they wear the pants. Right? Meaning that amongst between them and their husband, they call the shots. <laughs> she's that kind, Hind. She's that kind. Right? To the point her father said that if Hind was a woman, she would be the leader of Mecca already. <laughs> if Hind was a man, if Hind was a man, she would be the leader of Mecca already. Because of how she's so fierce <laughs> of a woman, <laughs> this Hind, that she jump, she. Who pulls your husband by his moustache? <laughs> Hin, right? I won't even dare. <laughs> right? I mean, if you have to think about the moustache, you know, shows the kind of woman that she is. Like, like, and Abu Sufyan allows it. I wasn't born in another one. <laughs> I mean, my husband would be very upset if I did that. <laughs> right? So pull my moustache and says, kill this good for nothing obese one. She calls her husband. <laughs> good for nothing obese one. <laughs> Unsightly is he as a people's scout. Are you useless, good for nothing, fat? <laughs> That's what she, this is really what she said. 
you know, like you went there to try and, you know, uh, survey, you become, you should even know that you became Muslim, <laughs> right? And then you come back and tell people to stay in their houses. Hello, useless. <laughs> no. No, no, he's a Muslim. Oh, yeah, she knew <laughs> at this point. Right, and then, and, and, and it said that she took him by the beard and called him and called out, Oh, people of Ghalib, kill this old fool. Her husband, eh? Right? She's talking about him. Will you not fight and defend out yourselves in your land? Right, so she's screaming at him, her husband, like, What's wrong with you not fighting? Are you coward? You this, you then the name calling are coming out, eh? And he said to you, Woe to you, woe to you. And no, no, be warned or hint. Truth has come, so be quiet and enter your home. I swear by God, if you do not accept Islam, you will be killed. Right, he said that to Hind. And he turned to his people saying, you know, woe to you, let not what she said give you false vanity. That means don't give you false hopes. Right? Don't dream la, dala. It's done. It's finished. We cannot fight anymore. It's finished. Right? They are conquering, they are conquering. Nobody can fight them. Right? It's gonna be a walk over. Right? And for truly what has come to you is what you have no ability to stand against. Whoever enters the home of Abu Sufyan is safe. <laughs> Again, cute love, Sophia. Never, inshallah. <laughs> like they said, may God fight you. Right? And this is, you see, are they are they entering into Islam willingly? It just happened the very next the very next moment they are Muslims. They just had this huge argument. You know, fight them. You know, you're useless lah. You what? The God don't God. They're fighting each other, and then Rasul comes in, and they're all Muslim. So they can tell the, what the kind of Muslims they are. They're like, they're like, they're, they're defeated lah. They're defeated. So okay lah. Masyadu Allah, la ilaha illallah, ishtana Muhammad Rasulullah. You know, that, that, that kind. Right? So Rasulullah has to do work to really pull them in. Because they're, they're there. That's why when, thereafter when they fight, people who are going to fight Mecca, they came out to fight with the Muslims, they fled. A lot of them fled. Because the Iman not there yet. Right? They came out to fight with Rasulullah, but then, but then, and also in the Quran, that when you all went out after the conquest of Mecca, you went out to, to, to Hunayn, to Ta'if, and your numbers amazed you, but didn't benefit you in any way. You know, most of them ran away when they began to lose. Because why? They're not like the first few 313 Abadr, not like those people. Those people, one of them is better than 70 of these people. You know, that one of the Sahaba, you know, the strong kind, right? So... Which is why those that fled, fled and those that stayed were actually those who actually stayed in Badr and were the same ones. <laughs> and they were the ones who actually stayed put. But Abu Sufyan was one of those who stayed put also. He stayed put and he fought. Because his iman was strengthened from before. <laughs> right. So, so, today, so they began arguing back and forth. They said, we got to fight you. What good is your home to protect all of us? And he said, and whoever enters his home is, and closes his door is safe. Now he says, whoever enters the masjid is safe. So the people will scatter into their homes and the masjid. And like, because he's like, how are everybody going to go into your house? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And he also said <laughs> that who is in his house and who is in the masjid is safe. <laughs> right, go, 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 go. Right, so and, and they go and Abu Su- and Rasam is not going to march into Mecca. So mashallah, eh, the lessons from Sirah, eh, it's all called lessons from Sirah that we learn. Uh, that, and we will see the, the way Rasam will, will deal with these people. Eh. So alhamdulillah, we're coming to our fourth type of people <laughs> entering into Islam. Right, and thereafter, there's a fifth type. After this, one more time, of people entering into Islam, that's during the Wufud years, right? Uh, and that we will see the problems if with that kind uh, after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu right? alaihi wasallam. At the point of his death, you're gonna see the problem with that, and uh, and and then how Sayyidina Abu Bakr uh, clamped down right, on what was happening with these people, the people who entered into Islam, but they didn't see Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, nor spend time with him. Right, but they, they, they entered because the whole tribe entered. The kind of thing. Lah. Right. They are not like the Medina people. So the Medina people, they saw Rasulullah SAW and they lived amongst him. Right. So they're not the same. Later on, we will talk about this group of people also. All of this, all, as you can see very clearly, application in our, in our zaman. Right. F- direct application. Same. Same. <laughs> right. So, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Okay. Uh, no questions? Any questions? Sirah. After uh, the Sahaba, yes. So those those who saw Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they're called Sahaba. Those who saw the Sahaba are called the Tabi'in. 
Those who saw the tabi'in are called tabi'in tabi'in. Uh, uh, we are ummah. <laughs> we are the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we are not tabi. We are tabi, 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 <laughs> all the way down. Right? But of course, we do see people who do see who have seen people who have seen people who have seen people all the way up to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right? And that is like especially you see the Ahlul Bayt, you see the Habaib, uh, you see the Mashaikh. Right? And that is what Sanat is about. Sanat is basically because you take knowledge from a teacher. That also gives the affirmation that you saw the teacher. Right? So if a Sanat for a Hadith, if you have a Sanat for a Hadith, or Quran Sanat, that means you saw someone who saw someone, I mean, or read with someone, who read with someone, who read with someone, all the way back to Rasulullah SAW, all the way back to Jibril, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's why Quran Sanat, you will see that when you give a Sanat, can, if you ever take, if you can take it, if you come to club or whatever, you will see the Sanat going back to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ila Jibril, ani Jibril, anillahi ta'ala, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That is Quran for Sanat. All the way to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. She has said that. And that all means, so we, we, we see at who saw, 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 Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you see that the Habaib, they're all descendants. So of course they saw, because they saw their fathers, they saw their mothers, and they saw, and they saw, and they saw. Until Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like, you saw all these laws, you saw Facebook, you see all these. Uh, Inshallah, you get baraka. But of course, to be in their presence, uh, uh, there's also baraka lah. Right. So, so see in the intentions lah, you know. And Inshallah, presence. Right? Because I know for woman's side, we cannot go to the men, right? So we just see everything on the screen. So we niat lah, niat that Inshallah that we get the baraka. You get the the blessings, inshallah. Mm, inshallah. But we get to see all the women. <laughs> Alright, okay, we'll stop there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alright, apologize again for being so late. I actually was here already. <laughs> At 7.15, 7, I was ready. Then the call came. Al-Fatiha, anna Allah, ya rizqulna ayman nafi'a. وعمل خالص مع جوست حسن التعليم دلالة على الهدى ويسر به قوم النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ورحمة علينا ومشايخنا وزوجك علينا وذا حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة